I was broke. Even like mentally broke in the sense as like, I lost my auntie during that time. My mum got ill. I was just finished. I just thought to myself like, shit. I sat back and I looked back and I thought, this is time to reset. Back then, that was when I had my R8. I was a gassed up little 20 year old kid, living the dream. I wasn't religious, didn't believe in anything. I just thought the way of life was spend money, sleep with girls. I look back at it and I think, you waste, man. All jokes aside, in the last 12 months, I've smashed it. Bro, I started a podcast that was making no money to smashing it. Getting millions of views a week. I done 9 million views last month, bro. I've always been in my dad's shadow. It used to be, oh, I'm working for a million, I'm working for a million. That's, you do that podcast, didn't it? <laughs> What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got Raheem from CEO Cast, but this one is going to be different. Today, Raheem is interviewing me. I don't know why you don't want to know my story, but you do. So, who wants to know your story? The bear people. Who's bear people? Like my supporters, my team. I didn't ask. You did. That's why you're interviewing me. No, you. You are. actually said to Raheem, me, Raheem, can you interview me? <laughs> I've got the studio now. True. True. Well, actually, guys. We're in the new studio. In Raheem's gonna film a little video after so you lot can see it because I don't know how to do stuff like that. I've just told him he's gonna do it so because he loves me, good friend and all. And Omar, can you say hello as well? Omar's, one. Omar's off camera currently. Omar's, off. Omar's just uh, what's the word, Mr. Producer today? Mr. Producer, exactly that, exactly that. Everything going correct? Yes. You, you sure? ain't got you ain't got a clue, have you? No. no there we go. Are we doing everything all right? <laughs> it looks it looks fine. Yeah. It looks good, yeah. Does the plant look in the right position? Okay, cool. Perfect. As long as you're as long as you're giving us the green light, we're good to go. I'll I'll always be Mr. Producer. Anyway, Mikey, what's going on, bro? All good, my brother. In the new studio. Excited, yeah. happy, buzzing as you can tell. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's that's the only emotion you got for your studio. No, honestly, um do you know what it is? I'll be honest, the only word to describe this, I'm mad proud. Like genuinely. Yeah, same. I'm, I'm genuinely proud like, as well. Genuinely, do you know what it is? I've always been in my dad's shadow. This is the truth. I have actually always been in my dad's shadow. And for once, I've got my own thing that is my baby. And no saying, one can change Changing the last name to Mikey... Blue Tick Show. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey Blue Tick Show. That's what everyone says anyway. Yeah. Put that in your passport. Literally. It used to be, oh, Mikey from Melly, Mikey from Melly. That's... You did that podcast, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a sick feeling though, isn't it? But you know what it is? It's, when it's, you get your own recognition. Yeah, and it's... it's. Listen, don't get it twisted. Everyone has helped me on my way, even you. I always say to everyone, you help me with that. All of this here, this wouldn't be possible without you. This Mom. table, let me just tell you a lot of people saying, yeah, I'm going to put a link to my podcast in this description because I've taken over this Blue Tick show now. I can do that. <laughs> this is my table, pretty much. Yeah, no. I told, Not the exact same table, but Should I mean... I get CEO cast engraved on it for you? You might as well, bro, because this is my full-on idea and everything like that. So if whoever follows CEO cast and you know CEO cast from before, maybe in 2021 times, this is the table we had in my studio. And... Uh, Mike was like, um, I want that. And, uh, and that's exactly <laughs> what he's done. But obviously, we, we're missing a wide angle camera today. So I wish you lot could see the panels that we've got in front. We've got the blue tick show on Mikey's side. We've got the fastest growing there'll show be, on my side. There'll be videos of it. There'll be videos of it. But it's honestly, film. honestly sick. The back panels obviously copied once again from my office. Was this from you? Have you got these in your office? Yeah. I didn't know that, honestly. No, not in my studio. In my where, in your bedroom? My, yeah, my room. My office side. Oh, bro. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Obviously, big bedroom split into two. You get yeah, me? Bro, that's no, no, but money, legitly, it? honestly, like, obviously, there's probably a couple more things that we've got to do in here to make it all yeah, 10 no, out of 10. Finished. It isn't yeah. not finished. We're right now, it's about more. 8 out of 10. We need to make it 10 out of 10 no. by just putting up different Even things. Even the other like bits, like the sofas over there for viewers to come and watch and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly. We're almost sitting right now, put a nice sofa there and a fridge on that side as well. Don't forget the most important thing, prayer room as well. Next door, it's already yeah, ready. Because without all of this, without God, you wouldn't have any of all of this. So yeah, 100%. 100%. That, that is amazing. But, but you lot know, I've been on my journey and, yep. I, and I try my best as well. Yep, yep, yep. And there's one other thing missing as well. Go on. My 100k plaque. Yeah, but you ain't got 100k yet. No, no, I know, but we're, it's coming, bro. It's this like, this yeah, it's year, gonna go end of right, this year. Straight up right there behind you. I'm going to put it on my head, bro. I'm going to remove my head and put the 100k plaque there. And it's just going to sit there throughout the podcast. But do you know what, though? Having this studio, yeah, that was, we were meant to go, like, I was meant to be part of this as well, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think now that seeing it and it's all come together, I definitely want to get one myself now. So I just need we're to find doing space. It. We're doing it. Don't worry. It's happening. Yeah. It I'm taking happening. Next Door's unit and we're going to be able to see your car studio there. Listen, it's whatever happens, it's coming. Your studio. This is based, bro, this is your studio. Honestly, I'm not even trying to gas it or anything. You know me. You said to me earlier, can I use your studio to film it? Brother. You're gonna have the code on the door. It's your studio. You don't even need to ask me. Come use it. Just, just don't even. Just exactly make sure that. you don't walk in when I'm here, innit? <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Let's get into this, Mikey. Mikey Melon or Mikey Blue Tick Show. We're here today to talk about your life. So, where do we start? 
You're 24 years old right now, right? 24 years old. 24. You're 24 or 23? 24. 24 years 25 old right next now. year. 25 next year. I know that. March 13th. Yep, that's Make sure one. you say happy birthday to Mikey. Yeah. Um, I only know that because my mum's birthday is on the same day. <laughs> um, so yeah, where do we start, bro? All right, well, obviously we've done that original podcast mm-hmm. on the CEO cast. Done that when I was 21 years old. Yeah, that was back in 2020. So yeah, Was that 21 sense. or 20? What was it? 21 year old or 20 year old? Winner? How old were you in 2020? It was three years ago. So, so no, but what did you title it? 21. Oh, 21 year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you don't want to watch that video. It's yeah. right there. Click yeah, that. Right yeah, there. Right there. You've done it the wrong side, but yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah, Click there. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's you always point to the left because when you're watching it, it's on the top right. So Guys, as you can tell, we're quite amateur at this. You wouldn't think that between us. I'm we, a professional. You wouldn't tell between us we are the face of podcasting right now. But anyway, <laughs> not going to not gonna guess it. No, honestly, I've done that podcast with you and I, as much as I loved that podcast, yeah, I looked back at it and I cringed and it was the first ever time I'd done a video. I hate it as well. Are you chatting bear crap in it or? The whole podcast was waffle. No, it was, it not was waffle. waffle. Do you know what? It was a very, no. very good episode. No, no, it was a great episode. Done 10,000 views in one week or whatever it, it was. Listen, it was sick. Even now, that's good numbers. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't, do you know what it was? I'll tell you honestly. Back then, that was when I had my R8. I was a gassed up little 20 year old kid living the dream. And I was just gassed. I wasn't religious. Didn't believe in anything. I just thought the way of life was spend money, sleep with girls. This is the truth. I was just gassed. That's the only word. I look back at it and I think, you waste, man. Like, the podcast is good. Everything in it is all good. But it's... You're completely different Mikey now. That's yeah, what it is. Like, yeah, like, I'm not... Like, I look back at it and I cringe. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you actual idiot. Who the fuck did you think you was? How much of it was waffle, would you say? And how much of it was actual truth? No, everything I said in it was true. Mm. It might have been a little bit inflated, but everything, like even down to gamers' grips, money it made, all of that stuff was true, word for word. There weren't no, I didn't make stuff up, but it was just like, for example, everyone thinks I own Melon. I don't own Melon. My dad owns Melon, but I think people thought from that episode, I owned it and it was my restaurant. No, it's, I've never once said that. I've never ever said I own it. I don't want to own it. It's fucking headache. Well, I titled it 20 year old old restaurant owner. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. So instantly, <laughs> I probably made that happen. Everyone thought like people were coming in and in front of my dad, like you got to remember, my dad's worked his ass off to get to where he's got to. Yeah. In front of him, they're walking over to me going, oh, you own Million? Oh, that's so sick. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah, right. Yeah. And my dad's sitting there like, you yeah, you're, you're on million, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pay, pay the bills then, innit? <laughs> but no, that's why I'm so... Like, truthfully, yeah, I'll tell you a little thing that I'm most proud about, yeah? So I think my life hasn't been easy, yeah? I'm no one to judge other people's lives and judge how hard my life has been. But people who know me, like, really know me... Like, I think you, you, Raheem, you're my brother, yeah? I'll probably speak to you more than I speak to my, some of my best, best friends who I grew up with. You haven't ever asked about my past, but you understand me. And I think that's, for me, that's enough because most people, like my other boys, they saw where I was brought up, council estate, saw my mum's house and, and know. Bro, I took a picture of a room. Check this out, yeah? Of a room? Of my bedroom. I favorited it because I wanted to show you. Check this out. Let me see if I can find it now. This that, is where you need airplay. That was airplay. the bedroom I was brought up in. Raw bando. That was the bedroom I was in. Yeah. That was my bedroom. Where is that today? Huh? No, no, this was 2020. Okay, yeah. And as you can see in this picture, I can touch either side of the walls. Literally, I had enough room for a single bed and wardrobes on the side. And where the the single bed was, I had to get the shortened single bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that it was a six a foot, it was a five foot, what bed is it? Yeah. The shortened single bed, so that it was enough room for it to fit in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why even just down to having this, my studio, this is bigger than my bedroom. Yeah, this is mad. This was genuinely bigger than my bedroom I was brought up in. So for me, this is like, sick like i'm gassed all right but then let, let me ask you yeah okay let, let's how much of your life do you want to go into because obviously Whatever. i know you ask i answer all right you know me i'm open book take we'll see what taylor edits out <laughs> <laughs> yeah so obviously taylor, phone me before you drop this episode well what we'll make clear to the audience as well is that you grew up with your mum yeah yeah I did. uh your mum and dad are separated yep yep so you grew up with your mum and you had very humble beginnings in that sense, yeah? Yeah, no, you, you didn't have the most... I remember you saying there was like seven of you at home. Yeah. And no, in a small, seven of us, bro. So you said seven of you. Five. Yeah, six, five, seven. Yeah, right, five, yeah, six, six, okay, six, six of, of you yeah, then, shit. yeah. So six of you all in a small house. Yeah. As you just showed the bedroom, you could touch either side of it. So you can only imagine what the rest of the house is like, yeah? yeah and there's six tiny. of you around there. Six Mikey's, you must be mad. Yeah. Why are you counting your siblings? No, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows. <laughs> six of us, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So... Wow. 
So you've been through that side of life, yeah? But then you've also had the other side of life with owner of Melon, driving the R8 convertible, banging girls, making money, AP on the wrist. Oh, you literally, you, it's two different... Do you know what it was, con- yeah? Wait, hold on, let me finish. Go on. Two different sides of life, yeah? Within a matter of a space of, I want to say, three years. Yeah. From when, you know, you first started talking to your dad again to when you started working with him, being at Melon with him, and taking things from there. So that's a big, 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 big change. So how do you think that affected you mentally? Well, you know, in a sense, I want to get one thing clear, obviously, so people don't think... So my dad was always part of my life. Yes, like, I was yes. never not talking to him, but he was... You know what dads are like sometimes. They're busy working. He always said to me, my business comes first. He's always said that to me. Even till today, he says, my business comes first because if I lose my business, I lose my kids. So he was just... There was a part of my life where I probably didn't speak to him for a few years, and he weren't in my life as much as I would have wanted him to be. I probably saw him once a month, sometimes once every two months. There was sometimes I would see him once every four or five months. Went for a phase where I didn't see him for a few years. But back to your original question about like, what is it like seeing both parts? It's very, very hard not to get caught up in that circle. For example, when I was with my mum, when I was living at home, I was hungry. Like I wanted to make money. And then I got a taste of what money was like. It changed me. I become a complete and utter, I can say cunt, right? Yeah. Cunt. Like, I started becoming arrogant. Like, my own friends around me started realising it. And then I started thinking to myself, like, bloody hell, like, I'm living my best life. Today. And then I started losing everything. COVID, no word of a lie, I was broke. Like, genuinely, I'm not even sitting there trying to gas it because I don't give a fuck now. Like, I always knew I'd make money. I'm never, ever worried about money. But I was under it. And even, like, mentally broke in the sense as like I lost my auntie during that time my mum got ill and I was just finished I just thought to myself like shit I sat back and I looked back and I thought like this is time to reset like this is a time where I gotta change my life let me ask you something yeah so you had lived a good 2019 2018 yeah very very high life 2020's come now broke I know the I think the R8 went in 2020 as well, yeah, right? Yeah, R8 went in 2020. Yeah, so things started to go in the down, down, downhill in 2020. Obviously, you didn't believe in God, like how you believe in God now. Did you ever think in your head, is this God humbling me? Like, what was your thought process to that? So now I look back at it, now I look back at it, 100%, God gave me it. No, 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 no. That's looking back at it now. What, but in, then, in the moment. I was, too, I was too caught up in it. I was too caught up in it after for what the fuck's going on. I never, I didn't even think about God. That wasn't even, I didn't give a shit about that. That was, wasn't even literally, in my eyes, I was just untouchable. I just thought, I'll make it again. I don't give a fuck. This mm. is just everyone suffering. That's what I thought. Genuinely, I thought everyone suffering in COVID. I'll make it again. Didn't care about it. Can I say, yeah, do you know why I think the, like, and I don't mean this in a rude way or anything like that. I could say this because I'm your guy. But I feel like a lot of your arrogance was also built up during Midnight, Ma- midnight Madness. Of course. Bro, For I, people who remember that, Midnight bro, Madness, yeah. Raheem, I thought I was famous. You thought you were the man untouchable by yeah. feds, by everything and I, everyone. I, I was, there was times where I look back at it now, that guy, dickhead, yeah? <laughs> but I look back at it now, but I was going out getting... I got arrested four times in like the space of two weeks. Yeah. Who, bro, who am I? I, know. I remember you even saying uh, that even your mates and stuff who you were living with at the time saying you're like, like Mikey, chill yeah, out. Yeah, no, I, my own, one of my friends, Kasim, yeah? Shout out to Kasim. Come round my house one day and took me into my house and said, you're not fucking leaving. I was trying to get nicked. I was literally trying to get arrested and he was like, what are you doing? But then when I come out of that and obviously I'm not even gassing, shout out to Raheem, yeah? Because genuinely, bro, you might not know it, but you single-handedly changed my life in a massive way, introducing me to Islam. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when 
any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. Genuinely. I didn't introduce you. To, this is what oh, I brother, say listen, to you all the time. You've got to take credit for it. You no, did. No, no, you did. No, okay, no, no. Listen, no, tell me who sent me the prez. You sent me. A no, 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 who, no, no, no. This who, is when you reverted already. Yeah, but I didn't. So I reverted. I didn't do nothing about it. Yeah, but you always say that you reverted because of me, yeah? And don't get me wrong, I like the idea because, you know, that's no, more, more. I did. As, so as, I re- <laughs> Mikey called it, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, you know, like good points in Islam. What is it? What is it that you call it? What was it in Dubai? You remember we kept saying it's like me, you and a bus. Bad point. Uh, what was it? Points. Uh... You just, I don't know. Mikey, just end up in Dubai, whenever you've done a good deed or prayed, he's like, man's got a hell of points. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. The point system went through Bro, the roof. In, in Dubai, I collected so many points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you also lost a lot of points as yeah, well. That's true, that's but anyway, true. point being. Um, no, you did. I, no, listen, let me explain how I reverted and when it happened. So my auntie passed away done her funeral and we done it the Islamic way. My dad was very strict on, I want it done the correct way. I don't want music there. I don't want nothing there. I want it done the correct way. When we was all stood there and the Imam was praying, I swear to God, I just felt something. My mom's life, I don't know, obviously maybe you guys can relate or not, but it was just like, this is what I need to be a part of. Like, this is real. For about two, three weeks, I was asking my dad, can I revert? Can I take my shahada? Because I started like, this was when I started chilling with you. I started chilling with a few of my other, other boys. I was like, like, one thing I clocked about being like Muslim, you just don't stress. Yeah. Like when you believe in Allah 100%, you don't stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, like there's some days where I wake up and I'm like, I ain't got a podcast, I don't know. But don't worry, man, he's got me, I'm good. Like genuinely, that is one thing I've realised about all the Muslim people in my life. Obviously, some people still stress, you can't stop it, but everyone's chilled. Everyone just lives their life at their pace they do their prayers and they just, that's it. You still stress. I stress, but I don't worry. That's the difference. I stress, but I don't worry. I still get stressed about work. I still get stressed about making shit happen because, listen, God's not just going to give it to me and just say, it's all yours. He wants me to work, but I don't worry. I genuinely, if, if something happens, it's all part of the plan. Like my little brother phoned me up and he was like to me, I want to make money. I want to make money. I want to make money. I said, bro, chill out. You could, whatever's coming is coming it's written your book is written chill calm down but he's Christian isn't it no he wants to become Muslim no way yeah how I, because he's like loads of my boys want to become this Muslim this is when you took the prom yeah? yeah yeah he's like started so on TikTok he started like seeing stuff and he put up on it like he sent me stories about uh, like Alhamdulillah stuff like that and I'm like yo big respect to that but I think that's because he sees me he looks up to his older brother I don't think he sees it because he knows what Islam really is but that's mad though, because you've got another older brother, Theo. Yeah. Yeah. So not that he doesn't look up to him as well, but you've got he's got one brother who's Muslim and one brother who's Christian. Yeah. So why is it that he looks up to you in like for Islam and you know And he lives with Theo as well. Exactly. No, so with my older brother, like no one actually deeps it, but all jokes aside, in the last twelve months, I've smashed it. Like, touch good. Alhamdulillah, I've smashed it, but I have, bro, I started a podcast that was making no money to smashing it, getting millions of views a week. I done 9 million views last month, bro. Yeah, that's mad. Like, I hit 20 million views today. Yeah, that's mad. I don't, I'm not even on that. Like, it's, but, like, it is stupid mad. And that's not because of me. That's because of only one reason it's doing so well. It's, he's saying it. That's it. Like, I, I, I'm not saying you, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that's it. No, I think, no, I think he looks up to me because he sees it. Like, all his friends know me, Mikey from the Blue Tick Show. And he gets a little gassed in it. It's, it's a cool thing, isn't it? Yeah. When you're young yeah. and you're, you're like, your brother's got a few followers and he's got a podcast, he's like, oh, that's my brother. He's yeah, gassed. Yeah, yeah. He looks up to me. But listen, if he if I can help him revert to Islam, then I'm gassed. You get hella brownie points on that system, bro. Bro, I'm collecting so many points right now, man. Listen, on the on the topic of you reverting to Islam, yeah, there's one thing which we kind of we spoke about, but we, we didn't touch on it fully, yeah? Um, and I don't know how much, how much you want to touch on it as well, but your mum was diagnosed with cancer. Mm-hmm. So yeah. how did you find out this and how did that make you feel? 
Because everyone loves their mum. Like, I think that's the last thing that anyone wants to hear, ever. I'll tell you how it all happened, because I'll never forget this in my life, yeah? And this is the first time I've actually ever opened up about this, but I've been saying to you for so long I want to do it. It was 2021, I was driving to my ex-girlfriend's house, driving to my girlfriend at the time's house, and I get a group FaceTime call at about midnight. My mum sleeps at 10 o'clock every night. That's her, that's the time she goes sleep. And get a group FaceTime from Who's in this group? All the kids at my mum. The fuck's this man? Like, what's going on? So I answer the face. I'm like, yo, what would you lot want? Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, all jokey, smiling, and like laughing. Yeah, what would you want? Like, like I'm driving. Like, I, this was when I was driving. So I was like, yo, what do you lot want? And um, they're like, oh, mum's got to tell you something. Like, laughing. I was like, yeah, go on. What, what's up? They're like, oh, mum's got cancer. I switched. Yeah. So why are they all laughing about it? Because everyone knew apart from me. They knew that, listen, my mum is my, as much as on the outside, I'm the big, bad, gangster, strong boy, Mikey, whatever. My mum is my world. Yeah. Like if my mum goes, you're losing two people. You're not losing one. I'm gone. So they waited till I was the last person because they didn't know how I was going to react. So I hung up on them or I texted in the group chat. Yo, you look fuck off, man. Don't make jokes like that. What's wrong with you? Yeah. And then my mum FaceTimed me. I'm expecting her to say, ah. I didn't know. I, in my head, I'm thinking, is this April Fool's? So is was your mum in that call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I'm thinking, is this a joke? Like, what's actually going on? F- my mum answers. She's like, Mikey, it's fine. I'm going to be okay, but I've got it. Like, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. So what are you lot talking about, man? Seriously, it's going to be fine. You lot- When you think cancer, you think death. Straight mm, away. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, man. Turned the car. I went straight to my mum's house. I was like, what's going on? Like, seriously, tell me. Like, you really got cancer? Or is this like, you don't want to wind up or some shit? I don't know. They're like, no, 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 no. I have, I have, but it's going to be fine. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. What kind of was it again? Uh, she had it in a, in a, in a bowels, in a bowel cancer. So she had to have a hysterectomy, if you know what that is. Nope. She had all her stomach system taken out. I swear. Yeah. So she already suffered from Crohn's. So yeah. my mom's always been like in and out of hospital wish. Yeah. But when you hear cancer, yeah, it's a different thing. You're like, wow, that's the end of the world for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. So she started going on chemo. And I said to her, mum, please don't have chemo. Like, I beg you. It's the only thing I ask for you is your son. Don't have chemo. But at Why the same, was you against it? I just don't I just don't agree with stuff like that. I just don't agree with that chemo. I feel like it, it kills everyone. That's the truth. I feel like if you just battle it yourself, you'll be fine. So she started having chemo. I took her to every single, every single chemo session. I was finishing work on a Sunday at like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, going home, having like three, four hours sleep, waking up at 5 a.m., to take her to Harley Street Clinic, yeah? Never complain, that's my mum. Every morning I was going there half asleep, yeah, I was fucked. Had to do it, it's my mum. And I remember I get a phone call from my brother one day and he goes, Mikey, you gotta come get mum, she's really, really ill. I was, like, oh. I was like, Theo, please take her to the hospital, man. I was like, I'm shattered, I'm at work, I'm fucked. So like, this was the day after chemo, so you gotta imagine, I'm, I'm on living on like three hours sleep. And he was like, no, I got work in the morning. I was like, F-. I fell out with all my family over it because it was only me doing the trips. And I thought, all right, whatever, let me go. Drove to my mum's house, picked her up. And my mum, so during this period, she lost all her hair. And she had no hair. She, My mum went from being, my mum is beautiful, yeah? Like my mum, for her age, for, you look at my mum, you say, raw, she's beautiful. And she was unrecognisable to some. Like literally twig and bone, lost all her hair. She was wearing a wig, so my little brother never found out. And put her in the car, the whole journey to Mayfair, she was saying, I want to kill myself. I was literally crying inside, like, but my mum couldn't see that. I had to be the hard, strong rock of the family. Got to the hospital, walked into the hospital, and my mum literally, I, I picked her out of the car and I threw her by accident because, bro, she must have been like 40 kilo. Like, literally, it was. she was, her arm was like a tripod, bone. Took her into the hospital, and I genuinely thought this was goodbye. How long did this all last for? A year. Is it? Yeah, but okay. it was it was so... Like, some people have cancer for, like, five years, but it's slowly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for yeah. one year, they're fine. The next year, they get a little bit sick. Next, This was, like, all hell in one year. But no one could ever let, let my mum see us being upset. So, I dropped her off in the hospital. The security said I couldn't see my, take my mum upstairs. I was like, nah, no way. There is no way on this planet... I'm letting my mum go upstairs and I'm not seeing her. And my mum is all against violence, yeah? Like, she's the first person to be like, don't fight, don't do this. She was sitting down, she held my hand and said, Mikey, no matter what you do, I want you to take me upstairs. So I thought, okay. My mum said that. I, that clearly means she thinks that she's going to go as well. Went upstairs, I took her upstairs, didn't give a fuck about her security. 
um, and she got sepsis. It was heard of it. Blood po- poison in the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was on chemo. She was forty kilo weight. She got sepsis and she had no immune system. So she's gonna go at this point. So I dropped her off. They said, "Mikey, please, you need to go wait outside." Whatever. I went in that car, and no word of a lie, I cried my eyes. I sat in that car till six o'clock in the morning and cried my eyes out the whole time. Yeah, I'm no gangster. I don't claim to be. Your mum is your mum. If anyone don't cry, they're not a man. Cried my eyes out the whole time. In the morning, she phoned me up and goes, oh, "I can leave. I can leave. Come and get me." I was like, "I'm still outside. Like, <laughs> I ain't gone nowhere. I'm still here. Come." Put her back in the car, looked at her, and she was she was faking being okay. Went back to home that night, had to take her back to hospital because it happened again. Took her back. Touch wood, my mum overcome it all, but that experience there changed my whole life. And that is when I started praying. So during that part there, I was praying to Allah and I was saying, please God, just make my mum well again. Well, and you But you wasn't Muslim at this point. No, I was. He wasn't. This was when I reverted. Around this point was when I was reverting. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So around this point was when I was actually reverting. So she had it for about a year. So I reverted in when? 2022? Yeah. So it was towards the end of it. Yeah. So that's when she was recovering-ish. So I was at, I was praying. And every time I was praying, I was saying, Allah, please make my mum better and I'll never turn my back on you. So he did. My mum's fine now. She got the all clear. She's got another... She's actually got a scan this week. Is it? Yeah. So this is a year... I think this is another year scan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a checkup, basically. Touch wood. She gets it all clear again. She will. I know she will. Inshallah. But, bro, when you watch your mum go through that and the suffer and... Yeah, that'll break. Bro, having to go and buy a wig and walk around. But my mum's hair used to be so long and thick having to go and buy a wig for your mum. Like, no man, I don't wish that on my enemy to go through that. But not their mum. Not their mum anyway. When it's your actual mum and you're watching her break, that shit's not right. And I think that is what made my belief in God so real because he's made my mum better. Now I get scared if I turn my back on him, he'll my mum might get sick again. I can't risk that. So that's why I'll never, ever stop praying, ever, no matter what happens. Yeah, so that's the story of my mum getting sick. No, it's mad, man. It's, it's, it's a... You know, like you just said, I wouldn't want to wish that on anyone, not even in your worst enemy. Even if you're arguing with someone, I think the last thing you'd want to hear from someone's mouth is, I hope, I don't even want to say it. so-and-so gets cancer. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm not even going to talk about the situation, but for example, when so-and-so called and said something, something, something. Listen, with that situation with cancer, before when I used to hear other people got it and I never experienced it, I'll be like, oh, whatever, man, they can fight it or there's medicine or shit like that. But when you experience it, forget about cancer. It could be any illness. Cancer mm. is just deadly fucker that kills everyone. Yeah. But any illness, when it's your mum, bro, we're all men in this thing. If it happened to any one of us, we would all break like babies. 100%. It's. I think regardless of age as well, you know, age, you could you could be age, grown up. Bro. We could both be married right now, you know, have our kids start our own lives and all that sort of stuff. But the second, you know, your mum, you find out your mum's ill or anything like that. Bro, you know what it was? It was when I was outside that hospital, I was phoning everyone. I was phoning my dad, my ex girlfriend's mum, because I wanted, I just wanted someone to say to me, "Your mum's gonna be fine." Mm. I'm phoning them up, and everyone couldn't tell me that because they know what she was going through, and no yeah. one wanted to lie to me. So, but I was finished, and I'm not. My mum was gonna is gonna watch this back and probably cry because that's what she always does every time we talk about it. But my mum, shout out onto Maria. My mum, I don't give a fuck what anyone says. She is the strongest woman on this planet. She recently opened her new funeral home. Yeah. So I see that. I know it's touchy, but God forbid anyone needs help with a funeral shout. My mum, I don't know how to advertise it for you. I'm sorry, but I can't like, I'm trying my best to throw it in there. But it's, I'm so proud of what my mum's gone through as well is a madness. Like her story, I said to her, I promise I'm going to do a podcast with her, yeah? I swear to you, I'm good at it because her story is mad like she is rock and bone rock and bone rock and, yeah rock and, fuck it, rock and bone but she's not and i think experiences like that back to living that r8 life going around flying about cars x y and z to the complete opposite losing everything and watching your mom be sick is like fuck like get your shit together mikey like now no matter what happens i see my mom every week no matter what i see her two three times a week now i go and see her just 
but it's not worth it. Like, why argue with family? It's not worth it. Like, and I think people learn as well. I think through humbling experiences like that, it takes a lot. Obviously, no one wishes that to happen, but I needed that. Otherwise, I wasn't changing. I was getting worse and worse. Mm. I didn't give a shit about losing my car. I didn't give a shit about money. I just wanted to be that guy. Now, bro, AP, I couldn't give a fuck if I lost it all tomorrow. As long as my family are good, bro, money. What, what is money, bro? Nothing, like, real talks. What nothing. is money? Money is a means to an end. Bro, it, it, if you spoke to me two, three years ago, I'd be like, oh, I need to make money. Da, 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 da. I swear to God, I don't give a fuck about nothing. I lose it all today. I get, I wake up tomorrow. As long as I've got somewhere to rest my head, I'm good, bro. Mm. I don't care. I'll move back in with my mum. I'll speed by her side. I couldn't give a fuck about any of it. You got so many people out there chasing money, chasing money. The most advi- the best advice I give to these young kids out there hustling, bro, chill out. Slow down. It's not a race. Why are you race- racing? You're trying to die young. Chill out, bro. Take one step at a time and just live your life a little bit. If it's meant for you, it's coming. That's it. That's all I can say if to everyone. Written, it's written, it's written. It's come. It's, if, if you're meant to be a millionaire or this or that, chill out. It's coming, man. Just enjoy your life with your family, friends, people around you. Like me, I was so caught up on trying to make money, trying to do this, trying to do that. My mum got ill and my whole life was like, whoa. Whole life goes on pause, basically. No, I, I and then that's when you clock that the only thing really important in life... Family, man. It's family. It's just chill The rest out. of it all, all, is all secondary. Everyone's so hungry. Oh, I need to make money. I need to do this. Oh, I need more followers on Instagram. But what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Man's talking about followers. Bro, how, how much time you spent with your mum this week? How much time you spent with your dad? you got brothers, sisters, you spent time with them? No. Instead, you're sitting there taking photos on Instagram, trying to get a few extra followers. Sort your life out, man. Get your priorities right. What's going on, guys? This video is sponsored by London Steel Services Limited, based in Hertfordshire on the A10. No job too small, no job too big. Anything to do with metal, these are your guys. Make sure you hit up London Steel Services Limited. All their information is on the screen right now. They offer crazy lead times, 24 to 48 hours on builders, beams, and small fabrication jobs, flatbed and 45 to 90 foot crane high ab deliveries. The jobs they get involved with are barn conversions, extensions, loft conversions, new builds. They can survey, design, supply and install steel or simply just supply. Whatever you need, they're here to help. What was your what was your relationship like with your dad at that time? No, my dad, I can't lie, through that time we was arguing the whole time. Over this what, was, like we just random things or? Like I was a, because we just fell out. No, during that time we fell out. This was when I was coming up to my fight, mm. my first um, boxing fight. And in my, in the ring, I squashed it with my dad, remember? Yeah. But we were arguing, man. Do you know what it was? Me and my dad are very alike. We're both alpha males. We're both hungry to do well. We're both like, want to be the top dog. Now, honestly, yeah, I don't give a shit. About I'm, what? About trying to be the... Biggest man in the room, the alpha man. But I don't care. Leave me alone. Like genuinely, let me. I'm in my own lane. I want to stay in my lane by myself. I'm in the slow lane. Leave me alone. You look come race in the fast lane. Go go as fast as you want. Let me ask you this, yeah. So right, so do you know I haven't been meddling in such a long time that I don't even know if you're still working there. I'm there two days a week, day a week. Two days a week, day a week, yeah. So that's basically your shifts have cut down. You were there all the time before. I was living at Milling. You yeah. remember? I couldn't yeah. even you didn't have time to break. Now the other day I come Manchester with you on a what day did we go to Manchester on a Saturday, bro? On a Saturday night. Oh yeah, we went just on Saturday, bro. Yeah, yeah you know that's, that's a big deal, yeah. bro. You would phone me on a on a any day. I'm at work. Now, what's the motive? Let's go. What are we doing? But you got to enjoy life, man. But my question off the back of this is, you like you said in the beginning, you've always lived in your father's shadows, yeah. And no discredit to your dad. Your dad's a G. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But do you feel like now you making your own studio, you doing the Blue Tick show, you finding your own lane, it's time for you not to cut ties with Melin, but to take a st- step back from from working in the restaurant and living there and, and doing, as, as your dad says, to now you finding your own path and do you know what your it life is, like yeah? that? Islamically, your dad is your boss, basically, yeah? That's what they've all. That's what it says, and that's what it is. You got to show him the utmost respect, and that is my dad. Yeah, yeah no of course. I'm, I'm not what, denying that. At no, all. no, that's what I'm saying. Let me let me elaborate. Hold on, hold on. No matter what happens, if my dad phones me and says, "Yo, you're coming to work," I'm going to work. Doesn't matter what happens, but 100. percent This is my time to make my dad proud, to make my mom proud, to go and do my own thing. He don't want me to live in his shadow his whole life. Well, I hope not. Anyway, I think to be fair, yo, dad, if you're watching this, I know you want me to sit by your side forever, but man's got to go out and do his own thing, you know. But no, he does. My dad truthfully does want me by his side forever. But, but we've had this discussion before. I feel like that's because he values your opi- values your opinion and your input a lot. Do you know what it is? I'll tell you honestly. 
me and my dad, as much as we may not admit it to each other, we're in a very, very big competition. But a father and son rivalry. Not a bad blood rivalry. It's more... He obviously wants me to do good. He does. I know he does. I hope so anyway. But he does. And I think being young, this is me looking at it from a mature point standpoint, being young, I see it as he's in competition with me. He wants. He don't want me to do well. He don't want me to do well. But I think he just wants me to understand that he's already built a platform for me. Melin's a multi-million pound restaurant. Why am I not there? In his head, that's what he's thinking. Why are you going and doing your own thing, interviewing people and being silly? But bro, I love it. Like genuinely, you know me on camera. I love being on camera. I swear to you, I love it. Don't get it twisted. I'm shit scared right now on this podcast because this is so much information in my life. But I love it. I am an open book and I think people see that. And I think as much as my dad may be a little bit upset that I'm leaving his side, he needs to know I'm still there. I'm not going nowhere. I'm there like, that is my dad. No matter what his, he rings, I answer. And I think he knows that as well. Deep down inside, he knows I've got, I, I got his back no matter what happens through thick and thin. But it does make a difference not being at Melian all the time, not having... I think it's going to make me and my dad's friendship stronger, believe it or not. I think so as well. Like I always say to you as well, sometimes, you know, when, when dads are hard on us, it's not because they don't want the best for us, but sometimes it's because they they kind of expect it from us. Yeah. And also they want to see more from us. You know, my dad, yeah, even down to this podcast, yeah, one thing I'm upset about, and I hope he watches this, he's not phoned me once to say I'm proud of you. No, but he yeah? is though. But one minute, one minute, one minute. Because you know why? He's not not proud of me, but in his head he expects it. Mm. He wants me to be a millionaire. He wants me to be worth more than him. In his head, if I say to him, what, why don't you say, he goes, you're my son. What do, I, what do you expect? I want you to do that. I want you to have your own studio. You should have had your studio last year. Yeah. Like, he doesn't say it, not because he's not proud, but because in his eyes, I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. And I think it's cool, man. Look, me and my dad will always be like, listen, me and my dad are ride or die. That's squad forever. Like, that's my dad. Like, he phones me, I'm there, no matter what. If I'm at my wedding day, my dad phoned me and said I'm in trouble, I'm going to my dad first. Like, real talks. He knows it as well. As much as sometimes he gets a bit concerned and thinks, shit, has he still got my back? Well, we mentioned one thing there, which is definitely not happening. What, my wedding? Yeah, wedding day. Mikey's wedding day. Bro, I'm going to get married one day. Oh, well, yeah. Yo, well, why we'll see do you not that. believe me? Because you've been saying everyone you meet is wifey. And then what happens? They're not wifey. <laughs> no, no, not that they're not wifey. You're just not... No, 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 no listen, listen, right, listen. In the right frame of mind to even think about marriage. Bro, I'm going to get married one day, innit? One day? Inshallah. What, 50 years old? Bro, I'm 24. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 26. You married? I'm getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Say something. Bro, can I ask who you're married? Uh, uh, there's, we've, we're currently, uh, you know, just processing the application list at the moment. All right. We've got a few far away candidates. We've got a few local ones. We've got some in Dubai. Bro, oh, you're international. Yeah. My guy. Huh? Well, we've got a couple there, bro. Don't worry, man. Oh, all I'm saying, yeah. couple, I know couple it's, Arab things. They've got good money. Dad's oil owns oil companies and that. Can we just can we just take one moment, please? Go on. I want to have ten seconds. Yeah. Of silence for the Blue Tick Show Studio. It looks so fucking sick, bro. That I'm looking at the visuals. I can see it. The visuals are sick. I'm so gassed. Yeah, literally. Is the Blue Tick Show dead? No, fastest fucking grand show in the world. So let's keep talking then. Let's keep going. Let's keep talking. Make bear noise this time. Bro, this, <laughs> listen, let me just tell you all something, yeah? And you know what? Sometimes I actually hate saying fastest grand show in the world because obviously Raheem's got the best and biggest podcast in the world. But Raheem is a podcast. He's the fastest grand podcast in the whole world. The biggest podcast. Number one podcast for entrepreneurial and... Business. Well, go on, you tell me. Business and entrepreneurial ship. Entrepreneurial ship. I don't know, help me. <laughs> Entrepreneurship. <laughs> Entrepreneurs. Business and entrepreneur. Brother, what's your title? Showcasing Can business entrepreneurship. There you go. Showcasing but not entrepreneurship. Showcasing business and entrepreneurship. The fastest, the biggest, the number one. Mine is the world's fastest growing show. And Raheem is the face of podcasting. I'm the face of shows. Yeah. Something like that. Listen, we both do podcasts. So we're both brothers. We work hand in hand together. But you know what it is? I'll be I'll using the studio a lot more than he will. Yeah? I'll tell you something, yeah? So many people, even strangers, not strangers, but like, for example, a few of the people who helped me get the studio ready, yeah? They're like, oh, ain't Raheem pissed off with you? Like, you know, you just done a no, podcast. Da, 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 da. And I was like, bro, Raheem is my brother. 
The Blue Tick Show isn't my show. It's not my show. I'm the host. You, this is as much your show as it's mine. And all my guests as well. I wouldn't have been able to do this podcast without my guests. Of course, yeah, 100%. Like, all, every single person who's come on here, especially the guests who, when I had no subscribers, come on and show support. A few of these waste men that I know, I said no to me because I weren't big enough. Don't worry, you're never coming on the show. I asked a few people, yo, can you come on? They were like, no, wait till it gets a bit bigger. Fuck you. You're not coming on. <laughs> but I swear, you know that wound me up so much. So many of my people I thought would jump on, I messaged them. Yo, bro, starting a podcast, do you want to come on? Da, 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 da. Especially... He was never going to come on. But fully, I asked him as a brother, bro, can you come on, please? Yeah. Oh, wait till you get a little bit bigger and I'll see. Yeah. Hand on my heart, you ever shout me to come on this show? No. You got to pay me 10 bags to come on here now. Mm-hmm. Waste, man. You know, that wound me up so much. And I remember I messaged Raheem. I was like, bro, can you believe this guy said no? And he was like, oh, don't hold grudges, you know. Like one day, just get him on. Duh, 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 duh. Fuck you. You're not coming on. <laughs> no, bro. No, that actually, you know what? I've been waiting to actually say that for so long. That triggered me so much when he said no to me. No, but do you know what? It, it, true say, it is so annoying, especially with people that you know, yeah, because you know them. And, you know, even it's so funny because that saying of the people who support you the least are actually the people that you know. 100%. And it's it's no further from the truth, when especially when it comes to podcasting. I, I've met, I know so many businesses outside of podcasting before you even started podcasting. Yeah. Would they come on in yeah. the beginning? No. But now they all, all oh, come. you know, do you think it would be good for me to come on your podcast? And I'm thinking, no. Do you know what my line is? My go-to line. Ask my manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DM, I, I uh, email, email my manager. And then I'll just give Mikey's number. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't gonna reply for me. No, but you know what? Me especially, yeah. There's so many people who I've met recently, and they, they, like, as obviously they see in the studio pop up, they're like, "Oh, you know, man, do you reckon it would be good if I, I've got a good story?" And then I scroll up, and I've asked you already. Yeah. Aired my yeah, you aired it, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bro, you're never coming on this show. Okay, all right. What about this? You you've DM someone bare times, yeah. Yeah. Someone like Jake Paul. Yeah. And I said to you. Yo, your show's gone a bit big now. But you need to understand, I have something to gain from someone of his size. Uh, yeah, true say. Yeah. Half the time we have half nothing to gain people, from these people. Uh, like, just people I messaged to yeah, start yeah, up yeah, where yeah. I wanted help yeah, from yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, fair They're not fair, jumping fair. on. Jake Paul, my buddy, you want to jump on? <laughs> Come, <laughs> shout me. Yeah, shout me, bro. I'll pay for the flight and everything. I actually <laughs> done a podcast with the guy who done his garage. Oh, really? Yeah. No he way. He customised his whole garage. Just get it patterned up, bro. That's what I'm trying to do. Get in there. That's what I'm Listen, trying to do. Inshallah, you make it happen this year. That's what I'm saying. I could have got your flooring done here. But look, I hope all the success for you. And as we were saying about, you know, people saying, oh, we want him to be pissed off and all that sort of stuff. I'll make it clear from my side as well. Because people, I do get the people saying, isn't Mikey like your competition? We are not competition. If this was competition, I would not be sat here right now. Bro, do you know what I've given is, him bro? the formula, what I'd like to say, to, to make money, essentially, to monetize the whole podcast. Look, we're in a brand new studio right now because of it. Yeah. Basically, I'll, Raheem paid for the studio. No, I didn't pay for the studio. <laughs> but I mean, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm down to help you wherever I can because I know... Mikey no, can help but me. But you know what it is as well. well. I don't even see it as competition or anything no, like that. But you know man. what it is as well. Like you know as well. I would never ever ever try and step on Raheem's toes. Like vice versa. I know if Raheem got a sick criminal to get on, because most of my pods are with criminals. He'd be like, "Oh, you'd be better on a blue tick show." Like he had it a couple months back. He phoned me up and was like, "Oh, he's a better fit for you using." Same thing with me. I had who I filmed with Aquaman, mm. and I was like, "No, Raheem, bro, he's better for your podcast." Like. It works in... Hand in hand. Because we meet does, different people all the time. All the time. And it's... it's. Listen, it's good. That's what it is. When you have a proper... I might meet some criminals on the run in Dubai and I'll be like, yo, Mikey. <laughs> Mikey, get your ass over here, man. <laughs> but when you have a proper brothership where there's no competition, there's no jealousy, there's no... Snakiness. Nothing. Like, yeah. I can phone up Raheem and talk about anything. Yeah. And I know he'll give me advice from his heart, not from... Oh, will this help me if I tell him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts, will facts, this facts, help facts, me facts, here? Facts. And vice versa. No matter what I do, I'll never step on his toes. No matter what. Even if I know, oh, this is going to get me bare views in my head. I'll be thinking, okay, how can I help Raheem get in on this? Da, 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 da. we got a podcast coming up. Oh, that's so mad. Wait, Omar, we didn't even tell you this, yeah? What? Imagine, yeah, we're in, me and Himaiki are in Juma now, yeah? When was this? Two weeks ago. Okay. We're week talk- ago last week, last week. No, it was two weeks ago. We were in, we were in Manchester last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. He's like, yo, I'm trying to get the podcast i've emailed him whatsapped him um time sorting out replied saying we'll sort something out so we're talking about him in juma i was like oh yeah i whatsapped him as well and mike he's like now whatsapp him again and all that sort of stuff there and then no word of lie yeah i'll put my hand on it put my hand on the quran message me on my whatsapp literally there and then 
as we were talking about it, as it come up in conversation, bro, it's, 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 I was like, yo, this is a sign. Bro, we, I, I tell you, by the end of this year, people are going to know. They're going to know Wagwan. Mm. Yeah, true that, true that, true that. It's been crazy. You know, I've got a question for you, Raheem. Go Since on. you want to try interview me and you know I'm actually what, what, just the last one on the snakiness and stuff go on Mike you could have gone down two routes here yeah for the audience now as well you could have I built uh, not built this podcast for you but I I helped you build this podcast from the ground up 100%. yeah you could have done two things left it as that and not snaked me but never ghosted. spoken again yeah, ghosted, ghosted and then I would have felt used or you know help me in other ways be a yeah. brother and all that sort of stuff so I appreciate that because there definitely are other podcasts who I've helped um, and you know turn their back on you yeah basically oh, 100% but do you know what it is in me in mm. life yeah people are there to help you yeah and if I don't help it, what I what you help me with today I could help you with something else tomorrow so as much as you've helped me now I don't think it's finished I'm, you're going to help me a lot more yeah with loads of other things even down to this podcast look the table I silly things the table is your design like the walls All right, it's my design but you stopped me getting a green wall I was going to get a grass wall you said no don't do that like so many things where, why would I sneak? Why would I burn a bridge today when I could use that bridge a hundred more times? Hundred percent, hundred percent. This is it what I don't understand sense. about people. I don't understand. People are so stupid, yeah, because they burn bridges over the beginning phase. For example, helping someone start a podcast, yeah, you've burnt the bridge there. It's done. And then I'm thinking, you flipping idiot. How do you grow it? How do you grow it? You don't know. What's going on, guys? This video is being brought to you by Morris Andrews Solicitors. As you're all aware, we've done a season two all about crime. If you watch that all and you're in any situation like that and need help getting out of the situation, reach out to Morris Andrews Solicitors and see if it's something they can help you with. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. Look, we're well talking done. about, we know what podcast you're talking about, yeah? Yeah, we know, that you've podcast, just burnt that bridge. How long ago did that podcast start before me? Oh, God knows. A long time before me, no? <laughs> that podcast ain't even worth mentioning, but I'm just talking about like... It, but that one grew a long time before, started a long time yeah, before yeah, me, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I've stuck by your side and followed your recipe. I've battered that podcast. And that is why we are the fastest growing show in the world. The reason why, alhamdulillah, everything is going well in our life is because we don't forget who gave it all to us. Exactly every that. single Every single Friday without fail, we're both at Juma. Mm -hmm. We don't miss our prayers. You'll mm -hmm. text me. Like the other day, I got in. I looked down at my phone. Before, while I'm praying Fajr, I got up. Looked at my phone. He goes, make sure you pray Fudge. I was like, just did. Don't worry. Yeah, got to be <laughs> done. It's, it's constant. Even down to sometimes we'll go to Melin to film a podcast. We're like, oh, let's go upstairs quickly pray. That shit is what makes a difference. People mm. forget that when they start making money. People who pray together, stay together. It's as simple as that. But even down to when I, I see so many quotes that are, don't forget me when you're doing well. And yeah. I won't forget you when you're doing bad. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That is what makes, like right now, touch wood. But Alhamdulillah. There we are. I'm getting there. Alhamdulillah. I'm doing great. Yeah. buzzing off my tits so amazing I still pray every day I'll yeah. never forget God that I will not take that away from me because what God gives God can take 100%. I've experienced that once before I don't want him to take it no more yeah, 100%, 100%. keep it here I want it all it's got to be done nah, I've got a question for you go on I know you tried to escape that one so you know both Mikeys yeah what do you mean both Mikeys you met Mikey non-religious okay you, yeah, yeah, now, yeah so this is now part two the yeah, one yeah. we done in between when I was still a little madman don't count yeah but that was in your new studio with this table I remember you met the first Mikey from three years ago. Yep. You've now met the new and improved Muslim Mikey. Yep. What do you see different? Everything. But what I also start off with this as well, I think people get the assumption that me and you have known each other for years. It's only been over the last couple of years or so that we've got yeah. literally extremely close. I'd like say promise. year, last year. Yeah, so we knew each other properly over the last probably, like year. We, obviously, the story replies here and there on Instagram and whatnot. I remember, do you know what's so funny? I remember one time when I came to your barbershop here, and I remember I sat down and you were right there and I didn't even speak to you at all. Serious? Yeah, I was like, yeah, this was like, I think maybe two weeks after the first podcast that we done. Did, I, did we see each other? I saw you. I don't think you saw me. Oh, raw. Right. Yeah, so rah. it was like, man's arrogant, you know, didn't want to chat to me and all that sort of stuff. I was like, all right, Probably safe. But obviously, I know only had 700 subscribers, so it wasn't really on mic. His level like that in terms of figures. No, I'm missing. Nah, bro. bro, you're but, 115,000 subscribers. 16 now. 16, 116,000. Yeah, Stop the joke, bro. Alhamdulillah. But yeah, no. Um, so what differences do I see? You're a lot more humble now. You're a lot more easier going and easier to talk to. Um, you're a lot more, I'd probably say, in control of your own life. Yeah. You definitely. ain't letting life decide that I'm going to grab you by the balls and, and take control of you. Take control of you, basically. And you're a lot more grateful for things that you've got. For example, this podcast or your friends, your family, whatever the case is, you're always grateful for that. Oh, and 
you definitely listen now. No, hunt, bro. Do you know what it is as well? It's like your circle. I think is the biggest thing in the world. Mm. And the biggest, biggest advice I'd give is sort your circle out. Mm. Like me, yeah. I still got my friends. I still got my, my day ones, Max and Nick. They, that is a family right there, yeah. And Barry, they're all family. And I got my other friends. You, Omar, you lot are family because you're my Muslim brothers. You're there. I know if I phone Omar. Me and Omar, we're not that tight. We're not. I've known him, what, three months? Less. Than Less. But I know for a fact, if I phone Omar right now and say, I need help, he will drop what he's doing and come. Mm. Vice versa. If he phones me, I might forget to phone him back. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if someone phones me and says, I need, I'll be the first one there. Yeah. And I think that's all down to just, bro, this is a family, man. Like, this is my, this is my people. And if, I have I have my different groups. I got my boys that I go out with and have fun and do our thing, whatever. But then I got my your part of the family as well, and I think that's what it is, man. It just comes down to being grateful and understanding. Like Alhamdulillah, it's all from him. Everyone needs to understand that, and the quicker people understand that, life changes. Alhamdulillah. What do you want to know about Mikey's life? Yeah, that's good. You're outside. Do you know what? <laughs> no, no, no. That's true. Oh, but just said on camera, I think Mikey's a tosser. Used no. to be. <laughs> but I'm going to say it still thinks. What a cunt, what a numpty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything I, else I, do you think I, about I, Mikey? I, I'd easily say within the past two months, you both are like my closest friends, bro. Come on. Bro, listen, I think, listen, we all went to Abu Dhabi and prayed in Abu Dhabi, innit? Sheikh Zayed Mosque. Yeah. Abu Dhabi, yeah. I'm praying in the mosque together. I think that straight away solidifies brothership. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like that is that was a big deal for me. Like, yeah. That was beautiful. I've never, like, Raheem led the prayer as well. Remember oh, that? Yeah. Oh, that Yo, was that's, not that was that's not a joke. That's not a joke. That picture, the picture you've got of us praying up yeah. here right now. That's mad because you know I even was saying to Mikey before, yeah, like like I didn't always not I haven't always been religious, yeah, so I didn't always know. My namaz off the top of my head. Now, don't get me wrong. I knew Surah Fatiha. And I knew some surahs and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know. I wasn't confident enough to maybe read out loud. Yeah. So it, whenever it come to like boys doing Jamaat and someone saying, who's leading? I would be the first to say. Not me. I, I wouldn't even be the first to say anything. I'd, yeah, I'd just be like, I don't, like uh, you know, <clears throat> I've got sore throat, something like that. You know what I'm saying? But that was the first time, yeah. Like when we were in that mosque and the next man, the, some old guy. Literally, you said to us, "You you praying us?" And we were like, "Yeah," and he was like, "Can I join?" I was like, "Yeah," and then for some reason that morning, yeah, that morning. Sorry to interrupt you, but that morning he was like, "Oh, I want to start learning a bit more. I want to start learning and practicing a bit more." And it was so mad because remember on the way there he was like, "Oh, I want to lead," and we was all like, "Yeah, you're leading. You're leading. You're leading." <laughs> Boom, straight. Do away. you know what's mad? It was, so it was just uh, for the audience knowing. Yeah, it was me leading, Mikey and Omar behind me. Next thing you know, when we were on the final, um, Bro, what's mean? Yeah, but how do you say that in English? Last prayer, last last, last part last, of the prayer, last unit, last unit of the prayer, basically. There must be fifty people behind it. I turned around, I did my there's, there's, yeah. There's two lines. I've done two my bros. Slum, and next thing you know, there's like thirty people on either side of me. I'm thinking, yo, <laughs> this is mad. I'm thinking, raw. I got a video out of it actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah I sent it to my family, and I was like, I just led uh, uh, Jamaat for all these man here, basically, which is Bro, mad. That's amazing. Listen. Yeah. Oh my bro, come here. Come here, we got. Oh, come just on walking. this side. Which... Yeah, go on that side. Just, just no, come, come in, bro. Side, bro. Shut up. Uh, what's fast grand show, bruv? Have some respect. Yeah, bruv, you're no, in we both, can't see both cameras. Move, man. <laughs> what's the wires? What's the wires? What's the wires? Boom. Cable management soon come. Right, I'm sorry, but you haven't got really a chair like that. No, it's cool. I, I'll bend down, pause. <laughs> Cut that. But yeah, no, as soon as I got home. So after we come back from the mosque, yeah. Bro, I messaged my mum and dad. I was like, I've never had friends like this before, you know. And these times, I think that was second time I met you. Yeah, first time you met me was in Rolls Second, yeah. Second, for first time you met me, we just said hi and sweet, whatever, bye. Yeah, I'd even, I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Didn't really know this geezer, but see him watching all the time. Bit weird, but okay. <laughs> now I'm playing. But after that time, I was like, rah, these lot are like my brothers. Didn't think anything of it afterwards until we met up, what, a melon? Next, yeah. Next time was mm -hmm. it two weeks after? Yeah, yeah. No, that week. I think when we all got back. That I week, think we got so. Back. Yeah, that yeah, week, yeah. yeah. Everyone was back. We all met up, and now look, bro. We go flipping Manchester together. 
like two months in, I'm calling you my close boy, same like you. Do you know what it was, what you just said? Like you met, like your art, last friends were all about fucking girls, etc., etc. Don't get it twisted. We still have banter in our friendship. Of course. We're not sitting, it's not, all we do is pray. No, but yeah? the difference no, is. No, but what I'm saying is, we all there, always thing, fall back to the prayer. Correct, the correct way to say it is that we have a fine balance in our friendship. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I, I mean, as in, but I don't, don't, want don't get me wrong. We are not imams by any means. Nah, but we I are mean, not, uh, you know, preachers of, of, just pray, 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 pray. But yeah, we we're, we're, we're not perfect. No, no, of course yeah, not. Do you know what I'm saying? Everyone's saying everyone has their flaws and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, you do your salah, and that's what's going to bring people close yeah, together. 100%. You do your prayer. No, but we joke, we, we joke about and stuff. But at the end of the day, we hold each other accountable. Hundred yeah. percent. Like you're no, not, you guys are never. Like even the other day, what was at yours filming that podcast? Yeah? yeah, 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 yeah. Bossing jokes. Yeah. Turn around and was like, yo, before the podcast starts, we need to pray. Yeah, Mikey, as soon as Mikey said, we need to pray, I said, bro, the other day, I was even saying to my mom, as soon as I got home, re- before we even stopped the car, you like, go and pray for Jed at home. Yeah, no, 100, that's how it is, I've bro. never had friends like that, bro. Not even, even me. Oh, when we come back from Manchester, yeah, he texts me. Yeah, Say yeah, that, yeah, that's when he texts me. Yeah. Go and pray for Jed. I was like, yo, I already prayed. Yeah, yeah I got home. I, I was a bit too late because I got in by sunrise, but I prayed. Yeah, I waited. Pray, yeah. Still got to pray, that's innit? That's how it is, yeah. bro. And do, you know, do you know what? I'm not going to hide that. <laughs> no. Omar, your... oh, well, thank you for your appearance. <laughs> thank you, Omar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, do you know what, Mikey? What I will say as well on your Reva, which it reminded me as we're speaking about this right now, has definitely helped me a lot. Probably may- maybe even more so than you, because you used to come with me, not so much anymore, with, or you do on a daily basis, with like questions all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Questions about everything. And sometimes I didn't know the answer. So you'd research. So yeah. I'd literally, I'd be up all night or whatever it is, daytime, you know, just doing at least half an hour research on the correct information to send to Mikey, whether it be things like... Uh, what's haram, what's halal, what's, what's haram, this, what's yeah, what's halal. Like, loads of is things. this haram, can I do this, can I do that? Um, all these sort of things, and it definitely bright, like broadened my perspective of, of Islam and made me research and study more. Do you know what it is, yeah? The reason I was asking you and not anyone else is because I think you're similar age to me. You understand life like i chat to girls i do yeah i do that I, it's all like I, I go out i have my fun i do whatever but so when i'm asking you you're giving me ad- advice i can actually follow mm. whereas if i wouldn't ask an imam he would say do not do that do not speak to a huge like, don't do anything you would give me all right bro this is the correct thing to do try your best to do this like just make sure no matter what happens you go and pray at the end like you would give me realistic advice whereas most other people would give me don't do that don't care if it's right or not Come on, I'm a reaver, bro. Give me a chance. Yeah, I mean, you're the first... Um, not the first reaver in my life, but I mean, you're the first person I've guided as a reaver, yeah? I didn't want to make it... I didn't want to come across too harsh and too strict that puts yeah. you off Islam. Yeah, no, 100. That you was in my head. That to me. You always said that to me. Yeah, that was in my head. So I was like, you could easily go down the path of, all right, you got to stop everything now or restart your life. No more girls, no more this, no more that and all that sort of stuff. Which don't get me wrong, we, we shouldn't be doing that. I'm not here advocating and advising people to talk to girls and all. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. My point is, I didn't want to put that all on Mikey for him to think, oh my God, what is Islam? Is this really for me? I think that's the worst thing you, you can make someone think. Listen, that Islam whatever you've done, you've done a good lives. job, bro. That's all I can say. And your job isn't finished yet. You got, you're going to be guiding me my whole life. Bro. <laughs> I've got to find marriage for him, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about the amount of niqas you've had? And on that note, guys, <laughs> listen. <laughs> thank you for tuning into the Blue Tick. Do you know who I wish was here for this episode? Oh, my shake. My shake. My shake. shake. I found you out yesterday. He Is it? Me another one, yeah. Well, how you found you? Oh, do you know that explains? Because he literally messaged me, yeah, on Instagram. Because um, you know my, one of my boys, Yasin, shout out to Yasin, he got married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was like, he knows Yasin as well. Yeah. From Dubai. So he was like, um, give Yasin uh, my Mubarak for his marriage. Uh, pass my congrats. I said it will do. He goes, give my Mubarak to Mikey as well. Got married again today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was thinking, what? Bro, listen, guys. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you jump over to the link in the description, CEO cast. Let's get it up to a million subscribers by the end of the year. Let's intro make it lot. happen. And you know what to do. I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, shit intro. Uh, outro. You know what to do. Did subscribe, you? like, share with your friends and family. Guys, you know what? Like, comment, subscribe. Go share this with your mum, dad, uncle, aunt, dog, cat. Send it everywhere. And I'll see you in the next episode. Blue Tick Show out.